it is cold out here this morning. We've had temperatures in the single digits and low teens for the last several mornings. Today it was 14 degrees Fahrenheit this morning, and it snowed just a little bit a few days ago, but it's been so cold that the snow is still here. Since the last time I've worked in the blind, I've added a second layer of this camo netting to the blind, which hopefully will make it more difficult for the birds to see me inside it, and hopefully that'll bring them closer. And today I'm working with the Canon R7, and you may be able to see right here is the new 200 day 100 lens, so let's get started. By the time I finally got out here, it's gotten a little bit foggy. I added this little heater to the blind area, which hopefully should help my camera and I stay warm. The first bird that came to one of my perches was a downy woodpecker, I think a female. And man, I don't need all this lens. I only used 242 millimeters of this 200 to 800 for this woodpecker shot. It was a strange morning. It started out really sunny while I was setting up my gear. And then by the time I got ready to go, it got foggy. And my first shot was this female downy woodpecker. And I really liked the way it turned out. But pretty soon it got sunny again. The next bird I saw was a male downy woodpecker and I got a shot of it, but I overexposed it. And I couldn't understand why suddenly my camera was in the wrong mode. And then I figured it out. I had this ball cap on and I had it really down low to keep my head warm, even with this hood on. And as I would get right on the camera, the bill of the ball cap was changing the mode on the camera. So goodbye ball cap. Hello, stay in manual. This photograph was severely overexposed and I did not think I was gonna be able to recover the highlights, but turns out I was able to recover them and here is the final version of the shot. It's the male downy woodpecker on one of the perches and he has gotten a seed from someplace else on the porch and then gone and landed there with it and I really like how this turned out. The light is kind of switching back and forth between cloudy and nice and sunny and a little too harsh and I got a photograph of an Eastern Phoebe that landed right on one of my... Downy Woodpecker. Downy Woodpecker right there on one of my... on my log perch. I put some seeds on the top of it this morning and it is eating them. And I am shooting. And I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm in the slowest mode in terms of frames per second. I like it better for autofocus. This Eastern Phoebe shot was also overexposed a little bit and I had to pull the shadows a solid mile on the right hand side of the bird to get things to look balanced. But I do like the perch and the pose and here's another shot of the same Phoebe during the same burst. Just beautiful and usually the Phoebes don't come up and land on the porch but this time of year they eat seeds. And this is the female downy woodpecker that you actually watched me make photographs of because I was talking about the Phoebe when it came up and landed and I made this shot right here. The female downy woodpecker came back just a few minutes later to that same perch on my little log. I've got it hollowed out in the top. I just drilled it out with a big drill bit. And I've got some of my nut and berry feed that I put in it this morning and she's really enjoying that. She's come back twice for it. There she is again on the same perch. This is a hollowed out stump that I have actually screwed onto the handrail of the back porch. And she is enjoying that nut and berry. The Phoebe was eating the nut and berry as well. Definitely no shortage of birds this morning. I just saw a male cardinal. Here's the male northern cardinal. And he's on that same perch that the Phoebe was on kind of over to the left side. And it has real harsh light from the left and shadows on the right, but I did a much better job exposing this one, I thought. Then I saw some house finches and some gold finches. I didn't even mention this Carolina chickadee because I really didn't think this shot was going to turn out worth sharing with you, but it barely made the grade. I like the snow all around my perch. And here is the male house finch. This is up on the same log that a lot of the birds have been eaten off of today. Just a beautiful example of a male. And next up, this is a goldfinch. Just not expecting to see American goldfinch this time of year, but sure enough, there is one. I think this one is a female and definitely not in breeding plumage. Now, this is what the shot actually looked like. And you can see there's kind of a bokeh post 
and it's the post of the neighbor's back porch in the background. And I didn't like that, so I put it into the Photoshop AI and created this branch and got rid of that shadowy post. And I told you I would always share it with you whenever I use AI in one of the photos, but the actual bird itself is what I photograph. There will never be any AI changing my birds. And then I saw the Phoebe again. This time, I'm pretty sure the photo I got of it has food in it, which is not my thing. Oh, now the woodpecker's back. Nope, he's gone. This is fun. There's the Phoebe again on the hollowed out stump and enjoying the nut and berry bird seed. And, you know, I don't put the nut and berry in bird feeders anymore. The only time I put it out there is when I'm going to take pictures and I'll sprinkle it around on the handrails and I'll put it in that post. And the reason I don't put it in bird feeders is it gets really gummy and gooey. Here you can see the Phoebe eating the nut and berry that's right on the handrail, the snowy handrail. But it gets really gummy and gooey, and I just don't like the way it really messes up my bird feeder. So I only put it out by hand. Another goldfinch came back and landed on my perch that's kind of at an angle. And this one certainly wasn't in breeding plumage, but it had a lot more color than the previous ones that I saw. I'm pretty sure this is a non-breeding plumage male American goldfinch. And I kind of like this pose, but really I would have rather it was a little bit different. But this was the best shot I was able to get before the goldfinch flew off. The male downy woodpecker came back for a little while. I'm not sure if I got a shot of him that I like. But I will say that the second layer, I don't know if you can see, but there's one layer and then beyond it is a second layer of camo netting that I, this is the first time I've worked in the blind since I added that second layer. And I don't know if it's that that's making the birds come closer today than they have been on the last few times I was out here, or if maybe it's just so much colder now and they really want to get close to the food, even if they do kind of see me in here a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit of both. Uh, I think it is helping, but I, I think this weather is also driving them closer. I ended up landing three shots during that little section that I liked of the male downy woodpecker. Here's one on one of the perches, and this one's interesting because there's icicles hanging off of the perch. And here he is a little bit further up on that same perch, and this is the actual end of that perch. I did use AI to get rid of the bokefied post in the background of this shot, but it didn't change the perch at all. And here is the male downy woodpecker up on the hollowed out log eating some of that nut and berry that everybody's going crazy about today. I really like the way this shot turned out. The temperature's gotten up to 24 degrees Fahrenheit, a balmy 24 degrees Fahrenheit now. And I never have gotten really cold. The heater's definitely helped because the one part of my body that has gotten cold from time to time is my feet, even though I'm wearing thick shoes and two pairs of socks. Um, so I've just kind of moved the heater back and forth be between blowing on my two feet. You know, whichever one is the most cold, I'll switch it to that one until the other one gets the most cold. But, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got two pairs of pants on. I've got five layers of, of upper body clothing. This hood is doing a great job on this Patagonia micro puff jacket of keeping my head warm. But, uh, anyway, I figured out how to survive sub freezing temperatures out here in the blind with a little help from lots of layers and a $20 heater from Walmart. This has been an outstanding day for Eastern Phoebes. And then the Mockingbird, which is a regular visitor, showed up. And I think my shots of the Mockingbird were only at 214 millimeters. Here is the Northern Mockingbird and it is also interested in the nut and berry bird seed that Heather gets for me from Walmart when she goes grocery shopping. Maybe we should get a sponsorship from this company. Well, that ended up being a productive morning out here in the blind. Hopefully the shots were good. I haven't seen them yet. You already have. You know, I think I'll probably switch back to using the 100 to 500 out here in the blind pretty soon. I think I only needed more than 500 millimeters for one shot today. And I think the 100 to 500 is a little bit sharper than the 200 to 800, but I do enjoy this lens, and especially if you are a full-frame shooter, this lens is definitely the way to go if you're a full-frame shooter and you want an inexpensive lens. I think on the R7, the 100-500 to might be a better choice in most situations just because it still gives you 800 millimeters full-frame equivalent, and like I said, it's a little bit sharper. It's much lighter and easier to carry, and it is also 
faster aperture wise so uh you know i'm glad i have both lenses and there's times when i want to use a full frame camera as a matter of fact i'm i'm seriously considering an r5 mark ii if they release that later this year um i don't know if i'll buy it immediately right when it comes out i probably need to wait until 2025 to spend that much money getting married this year you know but um anyway i think that'll be the 200 800 will be a great lens for that camera but for the r7 maybe the 100 to 500 is better in most situations just because it's a little sharper much lighter much smaller and a little bit faster and i've already bought it you know if i if i hadn't already spent that's the trouble with the 100 to 500 it's very expensive and if i hadn't already spent all that money i don't know if i would spend that money at this point but i'm glad i do have that lens because it's great with the r7 and uh i'm glad that's what heather is shooting with too because it's really better for her because she's um you know she's five foot two so the lighter package of the 100 to 500 and the amount of power that it has on the r7 is really perfect for a lot of people and especially for her anyway sorry for blathering on so long thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, take a moment, reach down, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see some more stuff like this, subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye from the Back Porch Blind.